So after some excavation, this distribution box was uh, dug out. So we separated it. And you can see the flow. There's a lot, a lot of solid buildup in here. It's pretty nasty. So you can see the water that's flowing from the septic tank and short circuiting directly into one line. And the other lines are completely plugged. So short circuiting just basically means that this water is skipping ahead, creating a channel and going out one direction only. And so as you can see, that particular channel of the trench is plugged. These other ones are totally plugged. There is absolutely zero effluent getting to those sections of the laterals. Only this one is getting hit. So as you can see, traveling downward, we were excavating, trying to hit the, the pipe. And we made some incremental holes until we located the piping network. We followed the channels. So we're hitting the channels. And here you can see the infiltrator and the water backing right up and then creating a path down the, uh, down the roadway here. So causing a lot of environmental concern here. So what we had to do is work backwards, locate that one trench keep digging so we located the distal end of that uh, trench and then we kept making marker holes to locate our distance to the distribution box so we took measurements from the as-built as you can see it's a uh, buried quite deeply here unfortunately there's a lot of backfill that got pulled over the septic field and septic system which you should never do the distribution box should never be five feet below ground like this. So this is a big problem. And we've got uh, some infiltrator chambers leading right out of it. As you can see, those two channels are supposed to receive effluent, but it's going right into the bank. So this is exactly what not to do. Never put backfill over top of trenches like this because it creates uh, quite the bad scenario here as you can see. So now that we completely unblocked all the uh, channels here, we uh, adjusted our speed levelers and we had the flow coming from the house, a good substantial flow so we can direct it as we want it. So this area here was receiving the most, it was getting short circuited. So now we have it directed so it's receiving the least amount of effluent to help in its recovery. And then uh, this one here, this one here, and this one here, which hasn't seen any flow in probably well over a year, is now going to be uh, receiving the majority of the effluent. And then whatever it... Uh, whatever is left is going to be received mostly in this one and this one is going to be receiving the minimal because this one has had a substantial amount going through just this one channel for well over a year causing the failure that you saw earlier. So the problem with these distribution boxes sometimes is that you ha we have to be very aware that any micro shift, whether it be a couple of millimeters here or there, and in the field, whether there's a little bit of a shift in the piping, a millimeter can really affect the amount of flow going into each channel. So we wanna make sure that the maintenance provider checks your distribution box while he's pumping out at the very minimum. So at the very minimum, this needs to be checked every couple of years just to be sure that these speed levelers are working properly and that each section of the trench is receiving the same amount of flow. So now as we make our way down from the distribution box, we're gonna just check out our trench overflow again. As we can see, there is no more water trickle. The water stopped trickling and is now settling and now this wastewater is going to be absorbed into the soil. Now our next order of business is we need to contain this. So we have to bring a little bit of sand over top of this to ensure that 
it doesn't continue to run down the bank. So now that we've stopped this flow, we certainly want to put some uh, topsoil over top of this just to ensure that this stays safe. 